In this section of the lecture, I want to talk about the other uh, uh, differentiation that we have between between type systems. So just to recap, we had we had this type system. We talked about static versus dynamic. That was one uh, split that we had between two systems. And what I want, now I want to talk about weak and strong. The definition of weak and strong is how um, strongly does the type system uh, enforce its rules? Now notice it's a different question than whether it's dynamic and static. The first question dynamic and static was talking about is when does it take a look and decide what is the type of the variable? Does it take a look during compile time or does it take a look during static then during, during the run time? So is it static or is it dynamic? We talked about type inferencing, we talked about duct typing, all that thing belongs to static versus dynamic. There's another question entirely was how stringent are the rules? We need to say, if I go and I violate the rules, would the type system yell or wouldn't it yell? Would it say okay or wouldn't it say okay? It's a totally different question. You can be static and weak. You can be dynamic and strong. We already mentioned that, for example, C++ is, is somewhere here, right? And Python is somewhere here, right? So you can be dynamic and strong. You can be dynamic and weak. You can be static and strong. You can be static and weak. So I'm saying it's, it's a different question. The question is, in a sense, how uh, strongly do you enforce the rules of the typing system? And what that really means, in a sense, if you have a place where the typing is being used in a sense incorrectly. And when I say incorrectly, I don't mean that I can't figure out what to do. If you can't figure out what to do, then, then there's nothing to talk about whether you're, you're, you're strong or you're weak. If you can't figure out what to do, you can't figure out what to do. The question is, if I can figure out what to do, should I do it? For example, let's take an example. If I go and I, and I, and I write in C++, the following thing. If I write, for example, int b equals, um, let's say, uh, some value, let's say again, 65. And then I write char c is equal to b. Now notice I am violating the type system because you're supposed to not be able to, uh, to assign a character, an uh, integer to a character. But C++ knows how to do that. The truth is pretty much every language knows how to do that. We'll see in a minute that strongly type languages won't allow it. But C++ says, well, I know how to do that. I can convert. I can do what's called implicit conversion. Right? That's the word here. What's going on here is implicit conversion. Implicit conversion, that's what's going on. And I am converting the integer, the value, to a character, and I end up with C out, C would actually output the letter A, right? Because that, that's, that's, a, that's called ASCII for, ASCII code for 65. That's not the point though. The point is there's implicit conversion going on, right? That's, 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 that's what's going on. Now, it's true for a lot of things. You can convert from, value, from one value to another all the time. The, the question is not, whether I do it, for example, I go and I do explicit conversion, then it has to do with weak or strong. Explicit conversion says to the compiler or whatever, the runtime, listen, I know that this is supposed to be of this type and I'm trying to get into that type and I know what I'm doing, blah, blah. That's explicit conversion. When we talk about weak and strong, we are talking about implicit conversion, which means I didn't tell the compiler to do something or not to do something. I just wrote a piece of code and, and the compiler says to itself, well, the types mismatch, but I know what to do. Should I do it or should they do it? That's a question of how stringent is the type system regarding, uh, regarding the types that it's actually working with. If you go and you try to convert, let's say in Python, from an integer into a character, from a character into an integer, you can't do it. The, 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 the runtime is gonna say no. So here's a simple piece of code that in, in Python, and I have over here C is equal to the character A, so I'm sure that the type, the type of C is probably string, okay, it's just a string. 
and I go and I say, okay, give me the ordinal, the ordinal value of C, it gives me the 65, because I'm telling you, saying, give me the, in what order is it? So I'm told it's 65. And if I ask type C, it told me it's three, whether it prints or low, it's using it as a, as a character, right? So I know it's not willing to convert it, but if I go and I say, say print, print, let's say I'm just throwing, uh, I don't know, 15 plus C, right? So it says there's an error. Why? Because it's an integer and a string. Now, why on earth can't it go and use just convert either this 15 to some character or the C to some integer? It won't do it. The reason it won't do it is because it has a, a, um, um, it, it ha it has a, um, a strong type system and not a weak type system. And therefore, it won't allow you to convert what C++ would actually do easily, Python would allow. So you can see that Python, although it's a dynamic, although it's a dynamic language, right, it will not allow you to do implicit conversion from one type to the next. So that is the difference between strong and weak. Now, as I said, explicit conversion is out of, is out of the question. Implicit a conversion that I have no idea how to do is also out of the question. The only difference is when I know how to do the conversion, would I do it without you asking? And that is the difference between weak and strong typing.